Hi, I'm Bob Jensen. This is Fishing the Midwest. Thanks for stopping by. Mike, we're covering a lot of bases today. We're fishing bass, big baits for bass. And sometimes that makes a difference, doesn't it? It does, especially in the summer, which is the time we're fishing today. That's right. Big baits catch big fish much of the time. Then we're going to talk a little bit about boat landing etiquette. That's kind of an important thing. It really is, Bob, and it's kind of an overlooked thing that you know, it's a courtesy thing. Little things you can do to just speed the process up the boat ramp. And then we're going back to Cabotoga to catch walleyes. First though, it's big baits for bass. Let's get out there. In summer, weed growth peaks and these big weeds hold big bass. Today, we're chasing largemouth bass. We're using big jigs to penetrate heavy cover. Oh, go, oh man, oh man. Some big ones in here. There, well, it feels like there's at least one. Jeepers. He isn't that big. I mean, he's nice. I'm glad to catch him, but I thought he was bigger than that. Boy, when they thump it, they thump it. Oh, that's a nice one. Nothing wrong with that guy at all. <laughs> oh, boy. They drill that big jig, don't they? You know, we're middle of the summer now, and a fair amount of the bigger largemouth have moved off the bank. And what we're doing is we're actually on the edge of a flat that's got really heavy weed growth. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to find a school of fish in some of that deep weeds out on this flat. Oh. There we go, huh? Yep. Whoa. We're using, what are these jigs, five-eighths of an ounce, Mike? They are. Yep. How come we're using such a heavy jig? I mean, we're only fishing six or eight feet of water. Even though we're not in a real deep water, uh, there's some real good heavy weed growth in here that holds the fish, but it also requires a big jig because we need to kind of crash that jig through that weed growth to get it down to the bottom where those fish are hanging out. So basically, it's not the depth, it's the cover that forces us to go to the heavier jig. The fish are right on the bottom. And if we use a lighter jig, it could get hung up on top of the weeds and not get to where the fish are. We gotta get that bait down to where the fish are because if the fish don't see your bait, they're not gonna bite it. Fish. Fish. How deep was that one, Mike? This one has, he was right out at 10, Bob. They seem to be a little bit deeper. Yep. They all seem to be pretty nice ones. Yep. That's one of the things, Bob, when you catch them on the big jig, yep. it seems like a lot of the time, you know, they're two and a half pounds on the small end and, yeah. you know, yeah. bigger on the big end. Yeah. But, you know, whether you're fishing bass, walleyes, whatever it might be, bite's good and you want to increase the size of the fish you're catching, generally a bigger bait will help you do that. Bob, we were on them, weren't we? We were. Big baits, big bass. We'll catch some more when we come back. Stay tuned. Fishing the Midwest is made possible by Larson Boats, Larson FX, where others have yet to go. Northland Fishing Tackle, made by fishermen for fishermen. Cabela's, it's in your nature. Evinrude, introducing the all new Evinrude E-Tech G2, the outboard of the future, available today. What inspires the angler to return to the water's edge are not the countless fish that came before, but the one that lies ahead. Smoother and quieter than aluminum, stronger and lighter than any fiberglass boat in its class. That's the power of the Vectech hull. See more online and at your local FX dealer. Larson FX, where others have yet to go. There's deer in the meadow, frogs in the pond, a place up the river where the fish are getting long. Money! in the lilies, crappie in the reeds, walleye on the Whoops. rocks and right. pike in the weeds. There's a fella down the road who's a real fishing man. Give you a stringer for the frying pan. 
Northland fish and tackle. Fisherman's favorite. It's a fisherman's favorite. Introducing a revolutionary concept in outboards, a choice. Now with the Evan Root E-Tech G2, you can choose unrivaled performance, superior fuel economy, and the cleanest combustion outboard on the planet. Choose from hundreds of color combinations to perfectly match your boat. And choose five years or 500 hours with no dealer scheduled maintenance. Experience the power of choice at chooseyouretech.com. How easy is it to stay rigged, ready, and tangle-free? Yeah, that easy. Rig Wrap, the world's best fishing rig storage solution. Welcome back to Fish in the Midwest. Let's get back on the water after those big bass. You know, there's a little bit of wind and I had a little bow in my line, and you can just see that, that line jump. This is yep. kind of a line watcher deal too. I mean, you feel a lot of fish, but if you watch your line, you're gonna know you got a fish before you feel them. That guy really isn't big enough to feel very good. <laughs> but watching your line is a big deal, you know? I mean, because with this wind, you just get a bow in your line, and you just see that line jump. One of the things that bass fishing has taught me is the value of watching a line, especially in bass fishing, but it'll help you anytime you're pitching a jig, whether it's for, you know, panfish, walleyes, whatever, watching your line, you can see some of the bites. We're using 5 8 ounce jungle jigs. We're tipping them with impulse brush beavers, but with a bit of a modification. What I'm doing is I'm taking this impulse brush beaver, which works great for Texas rigging, but I'm cutting it down a little bit and threading it up my jungle jig, and it works great for a jig trailer as well. And today we're using 20 pound fluorocarbon, and the advantage of fluorocarbon is it stretches more than braid, but less than monofilament with braid. I mean, we don't have much line out some of the time, 10 feet. If we were using braid, I mean, we could rip the hook out of the fish's mouth, couldn't we? You get a four pound bass on a short line like that, he's thrashing around, you got a chance of ripping that jig right out of his mouth. With mono, you have too much stretch, so floral gives you that really nice balance, kind of that in between, you have some stretch, but not too much, it works great for this style of fishing. Sunline Shooter has the abrasion resistance and strength we need to get these big fish up and headed to the boat. Whoa. Whoa. And <laughs> Save it. One huh. of the things, Bob, about these, what I call the flat fish in the weed clumps, Yep. sometimes when you get one, <laughs> there's three or four in the exact uh -huh. same spot. Yep. That's not such a bad one. That's a good one. But now we're making pitches, not casts. What is the purpose of that? I mean, we're only pitching our bait out there 20 feet at the most. How come we're doing that, Mike? You know, we're only in six, seven, eight feet but in some of these places, the weed growth is not quite to the surface, but pretty close. If you make too long of a pitch, the angle of your line wraps across the vegetation and your bait doesn't get down to the bottom. So we're making those short pitches to kind of try to drop it in vertically. We're accustomed to using sonar to find fish, but it's also important when looking for fish holding structure like the weeds we're fishing today, Raymarine's Chirp Down Vision gives us photo-like images of weeds and other fish holding structure. Let's take a quick break, go to Cabela's, and learn more about one of the Raymarine units we like. Well, the Dragonfly has uh, 640 by 480 pixels. So what are we seeing here? These are just, this is balls of bait fish. And when you get into a little bit larger fish, um, 
you will actually see the detail of exactly how that fish looks. Weeds coming up in that sort Weeds of Weeds coming up. And it's easy to use. Super, super, super easy. In any kind of sunlight, daylight, background light, they work wonderful. Um, very, very, very happy with them. And reasonably priced. Very reasonably priced. Good. Thanks, guys. Now back on the water to big weeds holding big bass. There's a little bit of cabbage in here. There's coontail in here. And what we're kind of trying to do is... Fish. Got one? Oh, he's moving all over on oh you, boy. isn't he? Yep. We just, Bob, went over that coordinate where we caught that other one. Did we really? Yep. Yep, just oh. went past it. You know the bite is good when your thumb bleeds, don't you? <laughs> Man, when they hit, oh, that's he's even not that big, but I look know. at that. I know. When they hit on that short line, it is game on. Yeah. Big bass and big weeds require stout bait casting rod and reel combinations. The Cabela's Pro Guide seven and a half foot flipping rod paired with a Verano reel is the perfect setup for this style of fishing. Oh, Bob, look at this guy. You see the stuff they're yep, in? Yep. <laughs> you got some coontail. It seems like those fish hit the bait a lot on the initial fall. So drop it in on a short pitch, let it get to the bottom, pump it, shake it, get it out, make another impression. Like that. I did what you said. By <laughs> <laughs> Look, that's, a, that's, a, that's a bigger one. Yep. Oh, yeah. Nice. He was right out there. Was he? Let's get back up there. Yeah. Bobby, you're a great student. <laughs> They never told me that in high school. Nice one. Look at that guy. Woo! Man, I like this. There we go. Whoa. Right in the junk again, Bob. Yep. Heavy cover, big jig, chunky bass. Five yep. feet of water. Yep, five feet of Just water. Just five feet. Fish. Big and Bob. Yep. They all feel big, don't oh, they? Oh, yeah. oh, but he is. <laughs> Whoa. He's a jumper. He is. A How did I let that one slide by, Bob? He whacked it too, Did buddy. he? Oh, whack it. Jeepers. Look where he's, he's got it all the way down. Doing that. Look at that. Ha. Uh, middle of the day in the middle of the summer. We were on a bite that day, weren't we, Bob? Yeah, we were, and that's just something to keep in mind. When you want to catch big fish, whether it's walleyes, bass, whatever, typically big baits catch big fish. Now, when we come back, we'll talk about some little things you can do to speed up the process at the boat ramp. Stay tuned. Fishing the Midwest is brought to you by Impulse. Excite the bite with scent, color, and action. Dakota Grills, unleash your inner chef. Offshore Tackle, the leader in trolling technology. Salmo, insist on Salmo. Rig Wrap, the world's best fishing rig storage solution. Impulse Soft Baits. 143% more effective than the competition. And the best alternative to live bait. Unique colors, actions, scent. Impulse Soft Plastics catch more fish, period. I enjoy making good food, but I would rather fish than cook, even when it's 10 below zero. That's why my family and I invented the Dakota Grill. We let the grill do all the work. I just set the temperature and my grill does the rest. Whether I smoke, grill, barbecue, or bake, your meats will always be juicy, flavorful, and healthy. Visit dakotagrills.com for recipes, cooking videos, and more. And unleash your inner chef. 
Lake Cabotogama in Voyagers National Park is your year-round destination for experiencing nature at its finest. Enjoy the solitude of the pristine wilderness while having all the comforts of home available at the many full-service resorts. The fishing is world-class. So are all the other outdoor activities that are abundant in all the seasons. Cab is the perfect place for your family or group of friends, and Cab is an easy drive from anywhere in the Midwest. Cabotogama Lake in northern Minnesota. Discover Cab now. I started using Salmo Hornets more and more a few years ago, and in those few years, I'm catching more and more fish. There's just something about a hornet that makes a walleye, or a bass, or a panfish, or whatever, want to eat it. Hornets have a lifetime guarantee, and they're hand-tuned, so they run perfect right out of the box. Cabela's has an outstanding selection of hornets in the best sizes and colors, and the folks at Cabela's can tell you which ones are the hottest. Salmo didn't invent the crankbait, they just perfected it. Insist on Salmo at Cabela's. How easy is it to stay rigged, ready, and tangle-free? Yeah, that easy. Rig Wrap, the world's best fishing rig storage solution. Welcome back to Fishing the Midwest. You know, Bob, one thing that can be frustrating is long lines at the boat ramp. You know, and you're right, Mike, and so much of the time it's basic stuff, you know, and it kind of... You know, if you get have a, a snafu at the boat ramp to start today, it can kind of goof up the day. Yeah, but there's some things you can do to make it simpler. Let's look at some of those things. Okay, so now this is what we're going to do. We're going to transfer all the gear from the truck into the boat here. Coolers, life jacket, everything. We don't want to do that at the ramp. We want to use this rigging area right here away from the ramp. We don't want to tie the ramp up. Transfer all of our stuff from here to there and get ready to go. Opening day, Minnesota walleye season, for example, there might be 30 or 40 boats at the landing. You don't want to hold up the whole show, so to speak. But one of the things that gets annoying for everybody is when someone holds up the whole line because it's their turn to back in and they have to put a cooler in the boat and unstrap it and all that. Have all that done so that when it's time, you're ready to back it in. Planning and preparation is important at the beginning of a fishing trip. However, it's also important when the day's done and we're putting the boat back on the trailer. Now what you'd want to do, especially the bunk trailer, is back it in and get the bunks wet and then pull ahead just a little bit to help guide that boat on the, on the trailer a little bit more. These boats and motors load and trailers load so easily now, there is just no reason to tie up the ramp for more than a couple minutes. And when you're done fishing for the end of the day, you know, sometimes a routine works really well. I will take stuff out of the boat and put it in the truck while Mike makes sure that the trailer and the boat are secured. Because just we have our own way of doing things sometimes where we don't want to forget Mike has this responsibility, I have another responsibility, it works really well. We cannot trailer with the plug in. So I make sure that the plug is out. The last step and a very important step is to visually inspect the outside of my boat to make sure that there's no weeds, anything hanging on the boat from the lake. We want to be really conscientious about preventing the spread of aquatic invasive species, so we make a good thorough check of our boat when we have it out of the water to make sure that we don't have anything that we're bringing out of the lake onto our trailer. Bob, those are some good thoughts on how to handle etiquette at the boat ramp. If you keep those in mind, your process will be much easier. And if you keep the thoughts in mind that we come back with about live bait rigging for walleyes in Lake Cabotogama, you'll catch more walleyes. When we come back, we'll be doing that. Stay tuned. Fishing the Midwest is presented by Mike's Country Meats, the best jerky in the Midwest. Ray Marine, don't just go fishing, go hunting underwater. Ice Castle, you can camp in an ice castle, but you can't fish in a camper. Sunline, the strength to guarantee your confidence. Beautiful Cabotogama Lake, gateway to Voyagers National Park. There's nothing like a great day on the water, and there's nothing like a great snack in the boat. Family owned and operated in the Midwest since 1984, Mike's Country Meats makes a sliced, full muscle jerky with no fats or fillers. 
Beef jerky is portable with no refrigeration needed and is at home in the tackle box, backpack, or tailgate party. Visit their website at mikescountrymeats.com for online ordering of jerky, snack sticks, and sausage. Don't just go fishing, go hunting underwater. With Ray Marine Superior High Fidelity Chirp Sonar Vision, you'll never look at fishing the same again. You're already the predator above the water. Now go find your prey below it. Ray Marine. Visit raymarine.com to get in on the action. We stress quality, we stress affordability. When people walk in, they, call, they say they look like a cabin on wheels. Made in the Midwest, four people in the Midwest. Lake Cabotogoma in Voyagers National Park is your year-round destination for experiencing nature at its finest. Enjoy the solitude of the pristine wilderness while having all the comforts of home available at the many full-service resorts. The fishing is world-class. So are all the other outdoor activities that are abundant in all the seasons. Cab is the perfect place for your family or group of friends, and Cab is an easy drive from anywhere in the Midwest. Cabotogama Lake in northern Minnesota. Discover Cab now. School of Fish is a unique kids three-hour fishing class where kids learn about lakes, the fish that live in them, and some great ways to catch them. In addition, School of Fish graduates leave class water-ready anglers with rods, reels, tackle, and more. Community education departments, fishing clubs, and civic organizations are just some of the groups that have hosted. Join the School of Fish movement today and host a class in your community for the coming year. <laughs> Welcome back to Fish in the Midwest. We're headed to Cabotogama Lake and catching walleyes on live bait rigs. Bob's joined by Travis Carlson. They're on Lake Cabotogama. They're using live bait rigs. Still one of our favorite ways to catch fish in the summer. Travis, when I feel that fish, I like to keep just a little bit of pressure in the line. You know, just a little bit of pressure, just to encourage him to eat it like that. Whoa. He whacked it pretty good. I could tell that he was serious about this. You know, Travis, I truly believe when it comes to putting fish in the boat, hands on the rod and reel, bare bones, live bait rigs are a good way to catch fish. And a, a wide variety of fish, walleyes, smallmouth bass, perch, largemouth bass sometimes. Live bait rigs just do a good job, don't they? My sinker. Oh, great fish. Nice one. Great nice fish. Nice walleye, yep, yep. And when we talk bare bones, I mean, this is as bare bones as it gets. You got a hook, you get your leech in there, you can put a crawler in the middle. Then you got your snell, and the snell is just the length from the hook up to the sinker. And at the sinker, we've got a little barrel swivel. And you tie your snell to the barrel swivel. And in this case, I'm using a uh, rock runner slip bouncer, but there's traditional sinkers you can put on there, uh, this traditional walking sinker. I like this one because it slides in your line, but if I want to change weights, I can just pop that weight off get a heavier one or lighter one, put it back in place, and I'm back in business really quick. Reel down till you feel that tension and... Yep. Set the hook. Set the hook. <laughs> You've done this before, haven't you? A couple times. <laughs> There's your sinker, that means the fish is close. Yep, oh, that's a nice one. Perfect. That was on a leech. On a leech. Yep. 
Travis, I know that you tie, pre-tie a lot of your snells. What size line do you use and how long do you tie the snells? The all the ones I pre-tie are about four feet in length, eight pound test, and I like to use a number six, number six hook. What suggestion can you make as far as for somebody who hasn't done a lot of rigging, how to be more successful with a live bait rig? Well, the biggest reason I use live bait rigs to begin with is, you know, they're finicky fish, they're bite and light, and the biggest mistake I see people do is they move too fast. You know, you're not feeling them light bites. You just got to move slow, keep it as vertically as possible, and, and, and feel for them light bites. You know, these rods we've got now are super sensitive rods. I mean, you just feel, if a walleye looks at that, your bait, you can feel it almost. What I like to do is hook the line over my finger with the bail open. And then when you feel a bite, I like to just let him go and, and just pinch line a little bit, just put a little resistance on it so he kind of feels something pulling back maybe, but just a little bit of resistance. If it's too much, he's gonna spit the bait. Let him run, let that line go, let it run like that. When you're ready to set the hook, get the line tight to the fish, close the bail like that, reel until you feel him, and set the hook. So now I'm just pinching the line a little bit. Just giving him a little resistance, pinching the line, Reel down to you, feel him, and set the hook. Just like that. So we did that, Travis? Pretty innovative, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, they are moving down a little bit. As the sun gets higher, they move a little bit deeper. Is that a sauger? Sauger. Little guy. Just goes to show you they catch anything. They do, yep. You know, Bob, this got perch written on this one. Does it really? And You're again, right. Just uh, another species we can yep, catch. Look at that yep. perch. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, look at the back of tail of him. We've caught walleye, sauger, perch, caught, caught everything, and we're keeping it simple. Bob, those live bait rigs catch them, don't they? They really do. Walleyes and smallmouth bass. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and big baits, big fish. Remember that. Hey, for all of us at Fish in the Midwest, thanks for stopping by. Be nice to one another. We'll see you again next time.